Hi, welcome back to the Cuzzy Sound channel and part seven in the series all about my Project 12 modular analog synth. In this episode, we'll be looking at uh, yet another VCA design, voltage control amplifier. Um, this one uses a JFET transistor, a junction field effect transistor. The thing with the JFET is that it is possible to configure it as a voltage controlled resistor. Now the basic design that I'm, I've started with I lifted from the Music from Outer Space Noise Toaster schematic. So here is that schematic and I'll put the link for the article down in the description. So if we have a look at the uh, highlighted section here um, you can see the there's a 2N5457 JFET transistor in the middle there and the way this operates um, it's a bit like a, on an ordinary transistor you'll get uh, emitter base collector on a JFET you get drain gate and source on this one the drain is at the top and that is where the input for the signal we want to modify is coming in into the gate which is in in the middle there um, now on the gate there you've got two resistors which form a potential divider um, and the input to the gate is taken from the midpoint of those two resistors and then the output is taken from the source which is coming out of the bottom there um, there is a, another resistor which is kind of connecting to ground and then the output disappears off to wherever you want it to go now in effect the let's say it's, it's configured as a, a voltage controlled resistor and the way it works is that the resistance across the drain and the source is inversely proportional to the voltage on the gate now if you've watched the Vactrol video in the previous episode that should sound familiar and in analog synth terms it basically means that the bigger the control voltage at the gate the bigger the signal output you get at the source so it operates like a voltage controlled amplifier so I took the MFOS design and I put it onto a breadboard and this is what it sounded like So some success there, it, it was working. However, I did notice an issue with it, which was very similar to what we got when we did the 13700 VCA in that there was a lot of kind of bleed through, carry through, however you want to call it, of the original signal before it was affected by whatever the control voltage was doing that was fed in to control the VCA. So I thought I'd try and do something about that and the first thing I tried was to play around with the resistance on the potential divider going at the gate and I'm not going to kind of show you all that because to be honest with you it made very little effect at all. <clears throat> so I then decided to have a look at the output. So what I did I put a level control on the output just a, a potentiometer and um, yeah that gave me some level of control but I wanted to see what was going in to the VCA so I knew what to expect was coming out so I played around with putting a, a diode on the input to the gate and here is my revised schematic diagram hopefully this doesn't look too different to the MFOS circuit um, but what you can see there we, we've got the CV input going through the diode what you will notice is that I've dropped the value of the top resistor on the potential divider the reason for that is that I'm losing some voltage there will be a voltage drop across the diode itself for a red LED it's, it's roughly around about 
1.9 volts. Um, so I did a, a, a little bit of a kind of a, a brief calculation and, and worked out that something around about 220 was going to give me a similar effect to not having the LED in there and, and the original resistor values. Um, the reality is that I played around with different values as well and it doesn't make that much of a, a discernible difference, certainly not discernible to the ear in terms of the performance of the VCA. Um, other than that it should look pretty similar until you get to the output and then there I have a 100k pot wired in line with the output which allows me to back off the output level and in fact that does actually make quite a difference when you start putting things like uh, short sharp envelope signals into it and you can, you can actually kind of tweak it to suit the best output. What it doesn't do is completely get away with the bleed through of some of the signal not unless you turn the pot right down and then you lose the signal that you want as well so yeah it doesn't it doesn't solve that problem but it does make it more usable by giving you a, a more control over what the output sounds like so I took this circuit diagram and well I breadboarded it just to test it but also I put together a strip board layout which looks like this very very simple in actual fact you've, you've got something that looks like you've got leads coming from the um, the potentiometer the reality is that I actually built it with the with a, a board mounted potentiometer so I can actually use the potentiometer to mount the thing on the panels and yeah I, I test them as as both a breadboard and just as a bare circuit board and they sound like this so yeah looking good let's put it on a panel and put it in the machine and then we can kind of have a quick look and listen as to what it looks like when it's actually part of the whole synthesizer so let's take a closer look let's move into the project 12 and I'll finish off with a quick demo of how it now sounds as part of the the main synth I'll just talk you through the patch first so as the sound source we're using one half of the 4046 joule VCO so the output from that is going to the input on one of the JFX the, the panel there's enough room to build two of these into the panel um, so two for the price of one almost um, well, uh, the output is just simply going out into the mixer and for recording um, I've got beat step is running a sequence and the gate from the beat step is going into uh, my buffered gate module here and so the CV signal is is going into the JFET is basically the gate signal from the beat step and then the CV from the beat step goes through the buffered multiple buffered patch bay and goes into the CV on the VCO. Now I've got the um, I've got the sequence running, but what I have got is if you look at the controls on the JFET VCA, this is the level control, which is the potentiometer that you saw on the output from the source on the um, circuit diagram. It's completely turned down at the moment so there is no signal coming through. If I start to turn it up what we're at there we're at about 60% and we've got 
a decent signal and yeah it's got a bit of a fizz to it but it sounds pretty much like uh, a VCA triggered sequence. Now if I keep going it sounds like it's starting to slur a little bit. What's happening there is you're getting more of the unprocessed signal kind of bleeding through. You're not it's not the resistance on across the uh, JFET is not knocking out the signal when the CV drops off. If I turn it right up, it's kind of, it's starting to, you, you don't get that punchiness, it's kind of starting to smear it out, which is what we found. There we go, back it up a little bit, and we, it sounds more like what we would expect given the input signal on the, from the beat step. So that's kind of pretty similar to what we found when we when we did the uh, 13700 VCA. If I turn it right back up again, what I'm going to do now is stop the sequencer, and you can hear there's the there's the severe bleed through of the signal. There's no input to the gate now, which means there is on, on that's the, not the gate from the, it's the gate on the uh, JFET. So what you would expect with a zero CV input, you'd want zero output. We're not getting that, but what I can do with this, I can back it off. And if I back it off to 60%, yeah, it's still there in the background, um, but it's not swamping everything else out. And when the sequence is running, it's just a bit of fizz in the background. So you can actually treat this more of a, a characteristic of of the JFET VCA rather than um, a problem with the JFET VCA. And I found I couldn't really get that balance with the 13700 so for me that was more of a problem to deal with than, than what I'm getting with this. This this actually can be usable. Let's turn it down and we'll, we'll stop that. So what we'll do now, so that was the control voltage was coming directly from the gate output on the beat step. So if we take the gate signal now and we plug that into the trigger on the envelope and then we'll take the output from the envelope and put that into the CV input on the JFET VCA. Well, I've got attack and release set to minimum on the envelope. Start the sequence running again. Turn up the level control on the JFET. If you listen to the previous video when we were using the Vactrol to do this, you'll you'll notice it's still not as sharp a cutoff as you would get with the with the Vactrols. Now, one of the things that you got there was so much bleed through on the 13700 VCA that if you kind of put a, a, a bit more of a, a slope on the attack, it was difficult to hear the effect. So let's see what it happens when we do it with this. Now with the level backed off a little bit, you, you can still hear a little bit of the background coming through, but you can definitely hear the effect that the envelope is having. If I turn it level right up, it's not quite as pronounced. But back the level off, and it gets more pronounced. So I can actually, it, it's another control I have over how the envelope affects the sound that I'm getting from the VCO. So, here we have a very, very simple circuit design. Um, it's a passive circuit, so you don't have to worry about the power supplies. It's all, the, all it's doing is manipulating the signals, the voltage signals that are coming from elsewhere. Um, JFET's a 
pretty inexpensive. This particular one is, I think it's around about one pound, one pound twenty, something like that. You know, so it, it's it's not expensive to build, and it is really simple. And I've given you the circuit diagram, I've given you the strip board layout. So yeah, go on, have a go, build your own. <laughs>